Welcome back everybody to Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about gemstones. Today what we're going to be talking about is this device right here. It's another one of the basic equipment that gemologists use to distinguish different types of gemstones. This is called the polariscope. So what we're going to do is talk about how to use it, how it applies to these stones, and what kind of benefits it can give us. What it does for us is it basically polarizes light. It shows us which stones split light and which stones do not. It can also go one step further and show us something called optic character, which is how many optical axes the stone will have, and that's basically in what directions it splits light. There are some stones that will split light in one optic axis and others that will split from two optic axes. So stones that have something called trichroism, like tanzanite, will split light twice, which is why it's possible for them to have three different colors. So for example here, I've got two red stones, and they're a very similar type of red. There is difference, of course, but for example, if you were buying stones and these were just mixed into the same lot, then you might have difficulty knowing which is which. Now they're both pretty, they're both a very similar kind of red, but the problem is one of them is at least double the price of the other. I'll give you a hint, it's the smaller one. This stone right here is tourmaline, and this stone right here is spinel. Spinel does not split light, whereas this one does. Now, you might be able to see the dichroism that we've been talking about in another episode, but if you're struggling that day and you just need some extra proof, then the polariscope can help you out. So what is a polariscope? A polariscope basically has two polarizing filters, one here on top and one that is down here in the plate that goes under the stone. And what you need is for this top plate to be able to rotate. So in order to use the polariscope, we need to cross these two filters so that they go in opposite directions and basically block out light. So when you take a stone and you use the polariscope, light is coming through that polarizing filter into the stone. That means that light has already been filtered in one direction. So some direction of light is going into the stone. Now, if you've got that top filter crossed and it's going another direction, light cannot go directly through to your eye. However, because these stones may split light, what will happen is, as the stone is rotated, that one directional light will find its way through to your eye, and the stone will appear to blink. Now, however, if you have a stone like spinel that does not split light, then the stone will just remain dark even as it's rotated. And that's because the light is not getting split. So it's only remaining in that one direction and it's getting blocked by that top polarizing filter. So this lemon quartz and this tourmaline both split light in one optic axis, so it'll appear to blink. This topaz will also appear to blink, but it has two optic axes. So how is it different? How are we going to know? That's where you need something that a lot of people fondly call the lollipop. Technically, it's called the conoscope. But who doesn't like pet names? So this is just a little glass sphere. Sometimes it's a tiny magnifying lens. Sometimes it's made out of acrylic. It doesn't matter, but what it needs to do is basically function as a lens. So what will happen is, as you rotate the stone around, especially if you use one that's large like this, you might find an area that looks iridescent, and that basically means it has rainbow colors. And that basically identifies the optic axis. So you can take this conoscope and put it directly on top of that little patch of rainbows. It will show you a symbol that will reveal the nature of the stone. Now when you're looking for that patch of iridescence, I suggest using a large stone because it's kind of one of those things that if you haven't seen it before, then you have no idea where it is. But bigger stones, it's easier to find that patch, and the patch might be huge. It's kind of like in Pirates of the Caribbean. You know that island where Cortez hid his gold? Hidden on an island that cannot be found except by those who already know where it is. So start with a stone that you know is doubly refractive, maybe a piece of topaz or something like that. Look for that patch of iridescence, and once you've seen it once, it's much easier to find it on the second try. So for something that has two optic axes like this, it'll basically look like a bow tie. On something that has one optic axis, it'll basically be a ring with a cross that runs through it. I know it sounds a lot like something out of Harry Potter, but I promise you this is actually physics. And quartz has something that's unique that doesn't happen in any other stone called the bullseye. So the bullseye optic figure is basically a ring, but the lines that come to it do not go through into the ring. And if you see that, you know for sure that this stone is quartz. As we said earlier with the spinel, this does not split light, so you're not going to find that iridescent patch on here. In order to use the polariscope, the first thing we need to do is rotate this top polarizing filter and make sure that there's no light passing through. Sometimes that's called the dark position. Other people call it crossed filters, but whichever you prefer. Then we take our stone, put it in here, and then we rotate the stone. If the stone blinks, 
then you have good reason to believe that it's a doubly refractive stone, but we still need to check and make sure. Some stones will actually trick you. I don't understand the physics behind it, but there are stones that are singly refractive that can blink. So the way we test is we rotate the stone to a bright position where we think it's the brightest. So if it's blinking on and off, you want to go to where it blinks on, and then you open this top filter. If the stone gets darker or stays the same amount of brightness, then it's a doubly refractive stone. If it gets noticeably brighter, then it's a singly refractive stone. It's a deceiver. In a previous episode, we talked about the dichroscope, which can show us stones that have pleochroism. But with stones that are so lightly colored, like this topaz, or even this lemon quartz, the difference between those two colors may not be distinct enough for us to be sure that this stone is dichroic and splits light, so it's birefringent. This, however, makes any stone easy. Once you're proficient with it, it's quick and easy to use, and you can check stones quite quickly. So is the polariscope a necessary piece of equipment for all gemologists to have? What I will say is maybe. It depends on if you're dealing with a lot of mystery stones. If you're doing identification with stones that you're not certain are one type of stone or the other, then this is an excellent tool to have. It's not very expensive, and it's very definite information. The one thing I will say is when you're buying a polariscope, please do make sure that you get a conoscope or some kind of the tiny magnifying glass that goes with it and make sure that this top filter rotates. Not all models do. Most of the modern ones do, but not all of them do. So just confirm that the top filter can be rotated. Thank you for joining me on Gemology for Schmucks. This was an episode about the polariscope, and I hope that it expanded your mind about the mysteries of physics that are shown in stones. If you've got any questions, please leave it in the comments section below. I enjoy interacting with you on these things. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, hit subscribe, and tell all of your friends about it, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.